okay hello everyone <clears throat> i hope you can can hear me all right those of you who have just joined uh, welcome to blockchain associations forum uh, summit fourth annual summit uh, we had some really really exciting interesting informative talks uh, this morning um, so my name is nasim nakwi i am the president and founder of the british blockchain association it's a great honor to chair uh, this summit this year again. And <clears throat> the theme of this year's summit is blockchain as a force for good. Devising sensible policies to build trusted economies of scale. A um, little bit about the Blockchain Associations forums. So this is a global forum of 51 member countries uh, hosted by the UK. And we were established in 2021 with the aim to bring these associations together and learn from each other, discuss challenges. And um, it's been a good platform. We, we meet uh, regularly, not just at the annual summit, but you may have he heard from speakers at our BBA forums, at our webinars. In fact, we hosted one uh, uh, forum earlier this year on national blockchain roadmaps, uh, where all the nine, 10 countries that have published their roadmap the the main representatives were there and discussed the challenges around national adoption of blockchain and there has been a big monumental shift in the global economy uh, driven by decentralization tokenization now i would like to thank all of the um, uk policymakers who have been um at the forefront of building this uh, blockchain infrastructure in the uk over the past many years um last year you heard from uh natalie elfick mp uh, former mp who um, was also the chair of the parliamentary group uh on blockchain and and we and we heard from McNichol. this morning was a member let's look at where the uk stands when it comes to uh, blockchain i mean what have we what have we achieved so far well we are um we have done some things really really well we still need to work on a few things which uh, is work in progress and so what are the things that we have done well well we have done many things so the firstly we have a dedicated uh, national level blockchain association which is the British blockchain association um and not every country has a national blockchain association so if your country has one you should be really proud of it because you're doing a really really good job of bringing together industry policy makers together so first of all we need a forum and it's been there and we were established in 2017 so we are one of the oldest blockchain associations now in the world we are also a, in uk is the first in the and the only center for evidence-based blockchain in the world we have world-class universities we discussed this morning scientific conferences world's first peer-reviewed research journal the jbba um and um uh, uh, and, and a dedicated a parliamentary group on blockchain where we meet with industry stakeholders discuss the challenges faced by um, uh, the industry and uh, discuss solutions. We have a very good regulator. I think it's doing a decent job, the Financial Conduct Authority, um, the sandboxes, crypto asset sandboxes, various stakeholder consultations, uh, all for evidence. So it's quite open in terms of um, how it operates. Um, and, and then we are one of the only nine countries in the world with the national blockchain roadmap we have a very vibrant tech uh, um, uh, capital which is home to many leading fintech firms we are a leading science and tech sector uk is the second biggest hub after us in terms of uh, foreign exchange trade for example we do 3.6 trillion dollar of foreign exchange trade a day which is more than singapore tokyo hong kong and new york combined um our tech industry is more than one trillion pound we have 43 unicorns um 
and they are more than any other European country. So, so we are doing uh, well on that uh, front. We also have uh, a very active uh, Treasury, uh, HM Treasury Department, Law Commission of England has taken a very evidence based uh, approach to devising um, and recommending certain crypto related policies and regulation. Um, financial services and markets bill became a law uh, and th that added the definition of crypto assets uh, uh, to financial services regulation we are the world's third largest digital asset economy biggest throughout the europe in terms of raw transaction volume uh, an estimated 250 billion dollars received in 2022 alone and so so now we have this um, now we have a new government and we heard from Lord McNichol this morning uh, on the, the challenges and opportunities that are faced by blockchain uh, sector and what needs to be done. So about two years ago, those of you who are, are not familiar of, uh, of the UK uh, blockchain landscape, so about two years ago, UK government set out this very uh, ambitious plan to become uh, the next global hub for crypto assets, science and tech superpower, next Silicon Valley. Uh, and since then, it has been kind of one step forward, two step backward situation, largely because of the frequent changes in government, variety of other reasons. But here we are now, uh, we have, um, we are the third largest crypto economy by transaction volume. 10% of UK holds some type of cryptocurrency or digital asset. This is according to HMRC data. So that's around six. 7 million people but if you look at what's happening with the blockchain and crypto businesses uh only about 44 or 45 firms as of today have managed to successfully register with the fca and if you compare that with switzerland they have about 1100 crypto firms registered about 500 in uae 80 in singapore so there is a lot of work that needs to be done and there are there are lots of issues on, on why that's the case uh access to Banking is a major issue. So more than 140,000 bank accounts were shut down of SMEs. Um, some of them were digital asset businesses. So there is general sentiment from the industry that although there is a positive tone and rhetoric from the government uh, in terms of setting out bold visions for this sector, which, is, which are very welcoming, but this is not are sometimes mirrored by the approach of the UK regulators. Um, you may have you may have seen or read the um, the King's speech, which he, in which he sets out the the plan for the next five years. And there are a few bills mentioned, which are going to be very important. And I'm sure Dino uh, will have. Uh, uh, much to say on this the digital transformation digital identity there's a smart data bill which has been uh, presented in the king's speech and there is there is no specific mention of crypto or blockchain in that speech but there are there are they, they touched upon some very important areas such as measuring uh implementing measures to ensure data sharing uh opportunities making sure it supports innovation making sure that There is privacy protection, and I can think of zero knowledge proofs and others. So there is, there is uh, this early days, early days, but so far uh, it has been a cautiously optimistic approach, I would say, for, from the UK. So, so what does the next twelve months look like? So I think what the UK has done well, in addition to all of the things that I mentioned, is a stakeholder consultation approach. We have a very active all-party parliamentary group. Um, we are the secretariat of of the group. British Blockchain Association, uh, uh, educating, informing, guiding policymakers of the uh, of the UK. FCA's regulatory sandbox was one of the world's first sandboxes in the world to test innovative crypto products in 2016. I remember we participated in 2018, which was the first task force, crypto asset task force that was established. Um, and and there are some other positive developments uh, in terms of uh, crypto exchange, crypto assets backed exchange.
exchange traded notes etn for professional investors which has been recognized some of the uh, some of the developments have been put on hold obviously and i hope that there is uh, there is a uh, more clarity in the coming um, weeks and months on stable coins and crypto staking there was a plan to issue a new stable coin crypto staking legislation by july but then we had a change of government so the plan was that once this will go live it, the whole host of crypto asset activities including operating exchanges taking custody of customer assets and other things all will come within this this regulatory um, this perimeter for the first time um and bank of england said that they would oversee stable coin providers if they become large enough to affect the financial system and fca said that they will regulate the wider crypto space so um so the work of the fc is important i think they are, they are independent to government so i i hope that there is some work um, i'm sure they'll be going on behind the scenes um because the fc is still there even though we have new members of parliament some are not there some are new but the fc as an institution is there so they but they are not legislators they are they don't make laws uh, they enforce and implement regulations the the work of the um, the legislation is uh, in the hands of the policy maker which is house of commons house of lords and then the king after his royal assent there is a bill it becomes a law so for example the lord mechanical mentioned about uh, this morning about digital digital pound for it to be launched it has to go through legislation process in the parliament um so um so there are challenges i mean crypto firms have i mentioned that um they are um uh, there is there is delays there's poor feedback from sometimes from fca and this is a, this is a well known um, it's an ongoing issue so um but but there is work in progress uh, so now what are the important uh, steps that uk must take to to benefit from blockchain like to assets technologies and really truly realize a vision in terms of becoming a next blockchain superpower i think access to banking for blockchain and crypto firms is important supporting um, skills and jobs i was very pleased to see that in this year uk uh, is now at number 2 uh, uh, ranks number 2 in terms of uh, the number of uh, of jobs according to the coin cup report and if you recall from last year 2023 uk was ranked at number 2 12 against other global competitors um um so so a lot happening in this space um we have um uh, we have uh, our work cut out you can need to think and deliver differently this space is moving extremely uh, uh, fast there is uh, every day there is a, there is something new uh, to work on we we cannot uh, just simply a uh, plan long drawn out multi year programs we need to be far more dynamic and agile as stezos mentioned uh, and and we have to proactively engage with the stakeholders who are at the forefront of innovation there is a big uh, um sometimes there is a big gap with communication gap uh, we don't want people to work in silos we have to give industry clarity support guidance we have to devise policies that are fit for purpose and dynamic and evidence based um, as well as business uh, friendly consumer centered and based on reliable evidence so uh, so sometimes this policies and regulations can lag behind and 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 this can affect how the uh, how the work of industry uh, uh, proceeds so i always say that best time to prepare for the web3 paradigm shift was yesterday second best time is now and we have to give um, industry clarity support guidance and bb is currently uh, working with a broad range of stakeholders as i mentioned this morning our last policy round table in the parliament it was a packed room we have 100 plus industry representatives uh from a wide range of uh, sector regulators experts and discussed a range of issues uh this is just before the new 
This is just for the election. Then we are a new government. Uh, international best practices, learning from others is vital. Key focus. Uh, and that's this uh, forum today is one of the opportunities to make that uh, happen. And certainly, I have learned a lot from others from from Brazil, Greece this morning. Um, so my um, my final points to conclude is it is my hope that the new government will move swiftly in an evidence based fashion to make laws and policies that are constructive, progressive, competitive. Uh, um, to position the UK as a leader in this space and truly become a global hub of blockchain technologies, we need to understand that uh, this is not just dealing with a, a company or a product or a service. We are dealing with a global infrastructure level technology that is borderless, that is very fluid, liquid. If people don't like some geography they move and then with that you you lose talent you lose revenue you lose uh it affects your economy so uh you want businesses to come and work in your country because that's how the economy is going to grow and because the the blockchain talent blockchain skills are global People will go where they find that they are welcomed, their policies support them, their regulations support them. So they will they will go and concentrate in those geographies, and then you lose talent. So very important that we we build communities uh, and and devise policies that are that are uh, um, are business friendly. Um, and there are entire communities that are being built on top of blockchain now. So we are not just talking about a technology but a community a community of entrepreneurs artists innovators lawyers potential of real societal and economic impact there and my hope is that uk will seize this opportunity 